Hello, today we will be covering lesson 1.2, sets of numbers. So sets of numbers are just ways that we can classify different numbers and organize them into groups. So at the top of this page, you'll see that we have natural numbers. Now natural numbers are also called our counting numbers. This is our most specific group. So counting numbers, when you first starting, start learning how to count, we start with one and we count up as high as we can get. So our counting numbers are the numbers one and up. Those are also called our natural numbers. Now every group following this down our arrows will also include the natural numbers. Whole numbers are very similar. Whole numbers just also include the number zero. And then we start in on our natural numbers. All right, and then the next group includes all the whole numbers, but integers also include all of our negative numbers. So, the negative numbers, zero, and the positive numbers. Rationals include the integers, as well as fractions. So you can think rational, fractional, or Just think of a decimal that be can, can be written as a fraction. So 1 half is a fraction. 0.125 is a fraction, can be written as a fraction. It is a decimal, but it ends, so it can be written as a fraction. You wouldn't necessarily think of this one, but 0.3 repeating is a repeating decimal that can be written as the fraction 1 third. And also square root of 4 is a perfect square, so that is equivalent to 2, making it a rational number. Now I do want to point out that a rational number, they all can be written as fractions. Meaning, say these guys up here, they're all integers. But every integer can be written as a fraction. For instance, you put your integer on top and you can write all of them over one making it a fraction now we're going to scroll back up and do our irrational numbers so irrational numbers are decimals that are not repeating and they go on forever so an irrational number includes pi Pi is 3.141592, so on and so forth. Doesn't stop, doesn't repeat. Another example, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on. It doesn't repeat, it doesn't stop. Another one, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2. This guy has a sort of pattern, but it's not the same pattern that constantly repeats, meaning it is irrational. And any non-perfect square is considered irrational because these decimals will not repeat. They do not stop. And then a number called Euler's number. This is approximately 2.71. But like pi, it continues forever and does not repeat. Now, you'll notice both irrational and rational numbers go into the real categories. So the first while in Algebra 2, we are just going to be using real numbers. Eventually, we will learn about imaginary numbers. But for now, 
we have our rational numbers, which include fractions and integers, such as 3 eighths, 0.2 repeating, because that, that can be written as a fraction, negative 3, 5, 0. These are all rational numbers, including square root of 9, something like that, perfect square. We also have our irrational numbers, such as pi. Oh, yeah, there's number. Square root of 5. A random decimal that just repeats forever. 1, 5, 3, 5, so on, so forth. Okay? So we're just going to write a few more examples on the next page of rational and irrational numbers. So some rational numbers include 6, negative 1 fourth, a repeating decimal, 9.131313, and so on, a decimal that just stops, 5.127. Square root of 25. 8.25 repeating, but that repeats the same pattern. 2 over 59. Negative 2117. These are all rationals. They could be written as fractions. Their decimal stops or their decimal repeats. Irrational numbers would be a decimal that does not stop or repeat. So once again, this one has a sort of pattern, but one number always changes, meaning it is irrational. Square root of 18 is irrational. E is irrational. Pi. 0.1576, that just keeps going. Square root of 48. Those are all irrationals. Now we are going to graph the following numbers on the number line below. We have negative 5 halves. Square root of 2. 2.6 repeating. You uh, should have access to a calculator, so if you do, you can go ahead and just take 5 divided by 2 for this first one. If you don't, you can do a long division sort of problem and do 5 divided by 2. We know 2 goes into 5 twice, bring down a 4, subtract that down, and we get 0.25. So make sure we know it's negative, so bring the negative down. Negative 0.25 is between negative 2 and negative 3. Go ahead and graph it. Same thing with square root of 2. We probably don't know what the decimal approximation of square root of 2 is. So you can go ahead and plug that into your calculator. Or... You can say, well, I know the square root of 1 is a perfect square, and that equals 1. And I know the square root of 4 is a perfect square, and that equals 2. So the square root of 2 has to be bigger than 1, but smaller than 2. So I know it's approximately 1 point something, but to find out the actual point, I'll go ahead and pull up our scientific calculator and just find that square root of 2 and we can see that it's 1.4 and so on. So it's about 1.4. I'll put the squiggly equal sign to equal about 1.4 and we graph that. And 2.6 repeating is just greater than 2.5 so 
we can go ahead and graph that one. Lastly, we have two more. We are going to compare the following using greater than or less than signs. Now, greater than and less than signs are just pointing. So the big open side is open to the side with the bigger number. So square root of 17, we can do something similar to what we did with the square roots up here. We know that the square root of 16 is equal to 4, which means the square root of 17 must be bigger than that. So this has to be bigger than 4. So we can automatically say that square root of 17 is bigger than 3.8. Now, if we want to check it, we can go ahead and go to our scientific calculator. We can do square root of, what was it again? Square root of 17. Oops. Square root of 17 is 4.123. So we know this is 4.123, so it's definitely bigger than 3.8. Similarly here, we know that square root of 25 is equal to 5. So we're not quite sure, for sure, that this one has to definitely be smaller. But we can say that the square root of 36 is equal to 6. So we know 6.25 is bigger than 6. And we know square root of 26 is smaller than 6. So we can say that 6.25 is greater. And we'll just check real quick. Square root of 26 equals 5.1 approximately. So this is 5.1. So that is true. All right, that is lesson 1.2, sets of numbers.